Here is some other technology out here. These things are called Dutch buckets. It's, a, it's one of the common ways, but this pipe, uh, this is, and these are all filled with cocoa coir, but below that pipe, there is cocoa coir that is completely saturated. It's like a puddle of water down there. Um, and so the plants are able to feed abundantly. I don't know if you get anaerobic bacteria down there or not. Um, some of the other things, systems I've ran with deep water, you did not get root rot. So as long as the plant is able to get oxygen from some level, I think they're okay being the roots being in water. Um, and, um, you know, these this pipe, of course, is an air feed, and this coconut coir is fairly um, porous as well. So, uh, But these are some examples of winter tomatoes uh, from cuttings. Uh, here's a Siberian that, I'm not sure what the date is, this was probably a cutting from last fall. Um, those are some kind of weak ones that I had down the street. I have another installation down the street. Yeah, I'm just uh, wondering what's not going right. I don't know. They have a little bit of mildew, maybe. Yeah. I may just dispose of those. You know, because... Oh, this side of it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got some it's got some healthy growth on it, you know. Okay, so those are all winter tomatoes, and then down here are three shard plants. Oh, they These, look delicious. Yeah, they were actually taken out of the hydroponic system on the side of the house there and put in here, but this is kind of a um, a Dutch bucket sort of thing too because down at the bottom of these pots before I put in the plants, I put a, um, you know, a cup or a recycled, uh, put a recycled Cool Whip container down at the bottom of those to be okay. a reservoir. So those are pretty much doing okay. This one is two plants. I have to watch it more closely because it gets, gets limp sometimes. <clears throat> and is this an insert or is that the actual... That, that's a net cup and, and, and that's an oasis cube in there. And that's a case where, you know, I did grow those in the, um, the deep water system for a long time. But then, <coughs> because I, you know, I don't get any direct sun on that system. Um, you know, I have the other installation, I have ones that are doing much better. I have one doing much better. So these are, are perking up too um, since I've been out since they've been out here going yeah, this way. Really healthy looking. Yeah. So I mean those are, you know, it's sort of those are fed with the same hydroponic solution. And you know, I feed the hydroponic solution to everything in the garden in a way. because um, there's the other thing is with you know with like with deep water culture for whatever good or bad reasons you should replace the solution now and then. But you don't want to throw it away. Um, and it can go onto all your other plants. Okay. And over here, I just got this today, um, but this is an important destination for the semi-used solution, which is a mandarin orange plant. I got this at Lowe's. It has a lot of blossoms on it. Mm. And part of what kicked me off on this today was yesterday I was watching some videos and I saw kind of a poor quality video, but the guy was talking about somebody down near San Diego who has 40 acres of mandarin oranges growing in three and a half gallon buckets and doing very well and it's hydroponics, he's feeding hydroponic solution. So that's part of my like master plan would be, you know, to have some place for the used solution to go so you're not pouring it into the sewer, which the city might not like. Um, <clears throat> so you can use it for other plants, you know, and you could, in Woody's place, you could have an orchard in the ground and dump it in there. I'd like apple trees. Yeah, you know, so that's a possibility down there, and that's a place to put your used solution. We used to have like 240 varieties of heirloom apples in New Oh, York. cool. Yeah. Just the other day, I was in one of the other videos I watched, the guy was talking about, he has a, you know, a hydroponic tube system, and at the end it drains out a little bit of solution, and there's an orange tree right next to it, and he gets these orange is almost the size of small grapefruits out of it compared to another orange tree that's not farther away so you know it really does make things grow mm. so this is the, the main deep water system 
Uh, this is the last one I built. This is kind of intended as a uh, prototype for a commercial operation, something like that. Um, but you know, one thing is that I like it up here for ergonomic reasons, mm -hmm. instead of having to bend over all the time. So that leads to supports. And what you have is a couple of saw horses mm -hmm. that have an 800 pound capacity between the two of them. So this weighs about three, 400 pounds. What is this? Two by four, um, eight, it's um, four cubic feet. It's about 250 pounds, this thing, loaded. Um, so, and then they built a little frame to support that. And you can kind of see how, you know, they're spaced every so often so that the strain is, is spread out uh, along the supports. And this slopes down so there was, that's the reason why there's some blocks at the far end uh, to hold it level. And that's something that was, is nice about deep water cultures, that's less sensitivity to the level being off. You know, if you, you do some of these other circulating systems, they have to be carefully leveled and kept leveled. Um, so that, that adds to your cost and your effort and things like that. Um, so, yeah, these are currently... This why, was, do, why do they have to be leveled? Well, with the um, circulating systems, what they do is they feed solution at one end of this long pipe okay. and it flows. So it's kind of like it has to be a few degrees sloped in order for everything to flow correctly. Um, so, um, so I think there's a video showing how these much stuff was in here a while ago. Looking at oh, that's down here. It's inside oh, here. Okay. Yep. So it's covered. Same size pump as the other one? This is a hundred, I think, because it's feeding this one and those two as well. And we've got those little cubes again. Yeah, those are the Aces cubes. Those are going away in favor of the Coco Quar. Because what will happen hopefully with the Coco Quar, you know, those plants and those little cups will become rip bound. And then you can just stick them right in the um, um, the net pots and they'll be fine. But also I've done things like, you know, you go to a nursery and buy a six pack of uh, romaine or something like this and just pop them out and kind of, you know, pull off the bottom until they fit in the net cup and then just pop them into these things and they've done just fine too. And how many um, seasons of uh, vegetables will you put in here before you change the water? Um, well, this is going to all, all going to be converted to basil, so I will take all this stuff out and replace the water. But I'd say once a year, you know, something like that. And, you know, if you were doing a seasonal thing back east, you'd, you'd top them up after the frost stopped and empty them before the frost started. So that would work out. And these all came from the nursery? or did Yeah, the these, nursery are, these, were, all? these are all grown from seed, yeah. Well, that's Got collard greens and chard and kale, um, and I've grown things like uh, mustard greens and Chinese cabbage. Um, no, neither do I. And, and uh, down in this one, I had uh, some watercress growing here, just spilled all over the edge. So you know, you can put all kinds of things. I mean, for personal use, you can use use all kinds of things in there. You know, this one was all filled with plants. And these were all tomatoes, uh, and um, part of the reason they're uncovered now is that I've had trouble with a raccoon coming in and tearing things up. <clears throat> but really? lately it occurred to me that, uh, well, Corinne's daughter was over and said that they have raccoons at their house and the raccoons come at night and drink, you know, the, the cat's water outside and bathe in it and things like this. So I actually put this out here um, for them to have something to bathe in if that's what they want. Um, and Corinne thought she heard some noises out here last night, but they were getting in here and just jumping around. They were pushing all the rafts out, tearing all the plants up. It was very frustrating. Um, and, and a while back I put in some of these uh, sticky traps. There were like four sticky traps in here. Two of them are gone. <laughs> okay, So I suspect that poor raccoon is trying to figure out how to get those sticky traps off, but he's not here. So. <laughs> Is that one underneath? It could be one underneath, yeah. Okay. 
So, but anyway, um, I thought of this bird netting thing, and I actually talked to the, the woman who does the landscaping over here. He says, "Yeah, that works." Um, it's strange. The raccoon never wanted to get up here, so I'm, I have no idea. It was mainly, I think, looking for a place to bathe. Um, so that's what I will do. This is all messy right now, but I'm going to, you know, use some sticks or something and, and make this a much more tidy installation. But for now, this is keeping them off, and that's all I want. Hmm. Yeah. And then this is your main. Yep. So then you get some basil in there, too. Yeah. And so, <laughs> is this, is it just gets damaged? Yeah, it just kind of lays down, gets damaged and things. I just kind of clean them up. I'm growing more than I'm using. But that's, that's good to know, too, is that, you know, with a very relatively small system, um, you can grow, like, for a, a small family or individual, you can grow a lot of stuff in this. Um, I put my other installation, there's, they have, like, four lettuce plants, and it's more than they're using, even though there's room for many more plants in that system up there. You need more hungry friends. Yeah, well, I do give it away. I mean, we can, you know, we can clip off a bunch for you when you go too, if you want. So. Now, is this, um... That's the remains of the circulating system that was there last year. I haven't gotten around to hauling that out to the junkyard. I'm actually using it to store some sticks. Um, but yeah, those... Like I say, it was, a, it was quite a bit of work, and just not worth it. Just too hard. You know, because, I mean, you can take, you know, you can very easily, you know, these uh, mixing things here, these are like 15 bucks a piece at Lowe's right. or Home Depot. You know, you can buy a 4 by 8 piece of um, installation for like $11. So, you know, chop that up into pieces and put that in here so it's pretty cheap. You just need the whole saw. And does this get direct sun? No. But it gets good reflected light, you know, off this wall here. So, it it works pretty well. Um, I did have tomatoes growing on this rack. I didn't get much in the way of fruit. It set a few fruit, but it just wasn't enough. Um, but I didn't really care because I was mostly wanting cuttings. But coal burning chimney things? Uh, I don't know what they are. They've been there a long time. Yeah. It's a gas stove in the basement now. But the sun will come around. You see on this wall, and in the summer there will be direct sun for a few hours late in the day. So during the summer this does pretty well. This is a, a three foot by six foot tray. And what I'm thinking about in terms of the bunches of cilantro, the bunches of cilantro or basil is to have four rows so that you could, from either side, you could reach in and get to the second row to harvest. Okay, um, and so I haven't talked to this guy. They were probably growing pot in this, but um, you know, it's it's been out here for months, not used.